Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. Today's guest, award-winning singer, songwriter, and hitmaker, Neil Thrasher. And now, Rich Redman. What's up, rock and rollers? Rich Redman here. Hey, it's another episode of the Rich Redman Show coming to you from Music City, USA, the songwriting capital of the world. And Jim McCarthy, how are you, buddy? Doing well. How are you? It's always great to have your golden pipes in the room. Thank you. Does your wife appreciate how awesome your voice is? On she can't get enough of me, uh, <laughs> you know, doing the honey pipes, yeah, know, to get things set. And, you know, I feel really bad today because you and I didn't pack much of a lunch. I told you I was going to bring you a nice paleo lunch. Yeah, you did. And Well, I did, but I only brought you one and we had to split it. But look at me. I'm fine. No, at this time of the mm. year, we're recovering from the holidays. So yeah. it's kind of like a forced. It's, it was good. It was a good meal. Uh, Phil kind of filled it up <laughs> and, uh, you know, really made it nice. And it was almost like a like an oriental type of uh, or an Asian cuisine. He does everything from scratch. Yeah. That kid is a great cook. Yes. And uh, then we had the soup that he made. It was really good. Chicken yeah. noodle soup. Chicken noodle soup. Perfect time of year for that. Hey, you know, I was going to throw it out to our guests and, and ask them if everyone's like, hey, Rich, I love these coffee mugs, man. Where can I get them? I mean, seriously, people love these things. They're good looking. My friend Lori Mertz, she really knocked it out of the ballpark. She got about 30 made for us and people were like, can I have one? Can I have one? So if there's anyone out there that knows where we can get these things mass produced and get the orders fulfilled so I don't have to go to FedEx and lick stamps, we want to uh, have a merch line. So if if anybody knows out there is in the merch world, we want to mass produce these coffee mugs. So get with us. I have an email address for you, the Rich Redmond Show at gmail.com. Let's get into it, man, because we That's have right. songwriting royalty today. He's a celebrated, lifelong, accomplished songwriter. He's incredible. Friend of mine, Mr. Neil Thrasher. Hey, bud. Yo, yo. How are you, man? How are you? Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me. I mean, to have a. Did you so say royalty? You are songwriter royalty. Wow. I've never been called royalty. Yeah, well, it's like... It, I like it, though. A king. You should be like a king, man. <laughs> and I'm From, taking this mug with me. Take that, you would take that damn mug with you, man. So, you, did you do it right today? No. No? I'm like really, really sore. You've been working out a lot? Well, this morning was the first morning that I went and worked out at the Y with my wife. Yeah. After the holidays? Huh? After the holidays or just in a no, long time? No, it's just my back and I've got this protrusion going on right here. Is it a hernia? No, it's <laughs> just fat. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> I got this protrusion. No, I, I got on the scale and weighed 200 pounds and I've never weighed 200 pounds in my life. Wow. And it's all... But you're tall. Centered right here and I hide it well. Yeah. Well, you layer. Me too. Now, you're an avid golfer, right? <laughs> yes. You're always on the links. Not always. It's when hunting season's in, I'm hunting. Okay, so you hunt and you golf. Yes. Those are your passions outside yeah. of your family and yeah, songwriting. Yeah, big time. How many times a day does a, someone like you who's had so many number one songs, so many cuts, so many royalties, Ooh. how many times a week do you write? Well, now I'm writing probably four days out of the week. Okay. And it varies. I mean, I'm always writing, whether I show up with, you know, to an appointment with my co-writers or I'm always writing. I'm always on. I'm probably writing right now. Are you, you guys <laughs> might say something that I make 250 grand on. <laughs> are you? Um, You'll never know. Are you a 10 a.m. guy? Yeah. And it's kind of moved to 11. I'm trying to move it all all the way back to nine. <laughs> I'm trying to get these guys to write at nine o'clock in the morning because it went it used to be earlier than ten, and then somebody started the ten o'clock movement earlier back, than ten. When was this? Back in the nineties, and then you got in the two thousands, and it went to ten o'clock, and then it went to ten thirty, and now it's eleven. And I'm well, what, like, what's the golden hour for you? You know, what's a good time for you? to I run? never know. It just happens whenever. I, yeah, I don't ever know when that's going. Are you happen. always carrying around a pad for ideas? And when stuff? you show up, you, I mean, you have to make, you have to be on when you show up. I mean, you have to whether you're feeling it or not. You got to dig. Mm -hmm. Some days are easier than others. Right. 
Well, the thing is that that separates the country genre from so many other genres is like, you know, people are like, no, I'm a rocker, man. The thing about rock and roll music, especially modern rock, is that it's all about the riffs and the presentation and the production. But if you don't have a story in country, the vocals like right here, because a story is being told and the art and the process and the formula that goes into the storytelling and the rhyme scheme and the, the presentation, it's a heavy thing calling man you know and like the story's like you know you've made a lot of people's careers if i look back at your career here and you think oh okay here's jason aldean's platinum selling tattoos on this town flyover states night train those are heavy storytelling heavy imagery songs yeah a lot of what they call furniture man we need some more furniture yeah. <laughs> flower states flower states was actually like eight years old before aldean ever heard it i remember hearing the demo and every hair on my arm stood up. I was like, wow. <laughs> and, and I mean, we've all heard those, those guys that are like, who would live here? You know, look, it's crazy. It looks like alien fields. Like when you fly from New York to LA, it's like, yeah. what is all Crop this? circles. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So is that, did it kind of come to you like on an airplane? Or no, how? that was, that was, I wrote it with Michael Delaney. Yeah. And, and he brought it in. And what's funny is he had passed it by like uh, three or four of the writers before you know, our appointment and nobody, you know, kind of bid on his idea. Right. And as soon as he said it, man, I, I started seeing all these pictures, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it was just like, he and I just started, you know, yeah. snowballing that thing. It was awesome. It, the way it came together was really cool because the images just kept coming. The phrasing of that song is what was so hard to do, especially when I demoed it. And I was going, man, I hope Aldine gets enough breath to get through those lines because they're just not, they're just, it's like one long continuous line. You don't have, there's not hardly any room for any breathing. Yeah, the, the, the highest notes that he sings all night are in Flyover States and Night Train. Really? Thanks to you. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's really got to, <laughs> he's got to really rev up for those things. I mean, for you, you sing on all your own demos and that's, it probably really helps you get them cut is because the presentation is incredible. I mean, you're an amazing singer. You were in a band, right? 1995 to 1997 with yeah. uh, Kelly Shiver. Yeah, it was really a duo. Yeah. And you guys got, I mean, you really kind of were ahead of your time, I think. I thought our record was. Yeah. I really did. I remember right. Justin Kneebank, you know, the, yeah. telling me those guys, so damn good. Well, it was, it's funny too, because our first single, like Justin put this really cool loop this yeah. trashy sound and drum loop on the on the. Did he produce it, Justin? Uh, yeah, we we all co-produced it together. Ah. me and Kelly and him. He's always on the cutting edge of things, oh, Ju man. Justin. He, I asked him to be on the show. He goes, Rich, uh, it's not my thing. <laughs> it's uh, he goes, I could see you being great at that, but uh, as much as I want to spend some time with you, I just uh, it's not my thing. Really? Like, uh, yeah, he just he turned you down. He's behind the scenes guy. Well, he's, he's, and he's good at it. He's too. good at it. He's really good at it. He put that trashy drum loop on the on the beginning of going, going, going. Yeah, and and it was a first single, and it and every every uh, reaction that we got from radio was they just didn't like. They thought the drum sounded bad at the beginning. That's <laughs> that, what they said. That's what they said, and it was supposed to be that way. It's right. supposed to be real trashy sounding, and and uh, that was their excuse. Let's, we should hear for, a little bit of that for not playing it. You got it, buddy? You got it? You got that right there? You got our record? There's one way in and one way out of this little Mississippi town Those old dirt roads and down home folks just make you want to hang around Just broke ground outside of town for a home improvement store. I guess Mr. Johnson won't be selling any hammers at his hardware anymore. And all the dreams that we've been living for. And that was 1994, 1995. Yeah. yeah. And you know what's wild about that? Uh, 
all the drummers know who Shannon Forrest is. Yeah, is that Shannon? Now listen, that was uh, we had used Shannon on on some stuff that I had I had worked with Shannon in another group I was singing with, and I I told Justin I was like, man, can we just he was putting the band together for the record. I was like, can we just use this kid that I know? That he's so good. He was a kid at the time. He really yes. was. Yes. He was kid. I mean, he was, he's a kid now. He was probably, I don't know, he might have been 17 or 18. Yeah. Something like that. Because his dad was in the business. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, can we please use him? And he played on the whole record. Nice. And I remember Michael Rhodes, bass player, he was like, I remember seeing his face when he first started playing with Shannon. He was like, what? 17? Now he's with Toto. What the? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think uh, maybe Justin remembered that experience because when I uh, moved to town in, let's see, 1997... Um, soon after that, he was producing a group called Britain Jack uh, with 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 uh, Britain Cameron, you know the songwriter Britain Cameron, and Jack Sizemore, the guy that plays guitar in our band. And um, you know, I was new to town, and he took a chance on me, and I played on their record. It was, and I got, that's how I got to know Justin. Uh -huh. And he would bring me in to do like uh, play percussion on Marty Stewart records and things like to be the glue, like add tambourines and shakers and stuff. Ah, oh, great! You guy. did all that stuff for him, and he won't come do your show. Well, he's like he's he's a behind the scenes guy. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> do you get kind of nostalgic listening to that stuff? Yeah. Where's this Kelly guy? You know, you're a man about town. I don't see him around. Well, I think he's like in Fairview, and he got into real estate, I heard, and he's doing really, really well. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing real well. Well, if it hadn't have been for, you know, <laughs> a couple of cuts and singles that I had during that mid-90 period when I was being an artist and out on the road and doing yeah. radio and all that stuff and not making a dime and getting cuts back home, I wouldn't ever come off the road and started doing it full time. Well, these are, you know, he, these are some of the biggest names. You, you're talking about uh, big cuts for Kenny Chesney, Carrie Underwood, Rascal Flatts, Reba McIntyre, Montgomery Gentry, Trey Seconds, th big, th giant three number ones for Al Dean, but tons of the B-sides on all the records. Four number ones. What was the fourth? Review <laughs> Town. Hell yeah. <laughs> and then Diamond Real. Martina. But who's counting? The, the list goes on and on. <laughs> Let's get it straight. But how did it all start for you? Your family had a, it was a gospel band, right? It was a gospel quartet. Yeah. I grew up around that. My, my father, the Thrasher Brothers. So you were playing how old? When you were, how long? Oh, I was, I've been singing, you know, since I can remember. Yeah. And just following them, going out on the road with them. I, I mean, I've been on that bus thing since I was three. You know, I'd, I'd go out with them. Yeah. And they were like the first ones. They had a, a bus leasing corporation that opened up down in uh, Birmingham, and they had Kiss out in the mid-70s and ZZ Top. And, oh, they were making money off of leasing yeah. the buses. Mm -hmm. Now, is your a lot of your folks, I mean, God, they, is your mom and dad still around? Mm -hmm. they got to be proud of you. Oh, yeah. So Birmingham, that's a hop, skip, and a jump. You go visit them for the holidays and stuff? They don't live in Birmingham anymore. They, they moved up here. And I, they threatened to move to the coast, and I said, "Y'all need to quit talking about it." You mean the Florida going. coast? No, the Alabama coast. Ah, and so they, so I'm from Birmingham, so they wouldn't know any other coast than yeah. Alabama coast. <laughs> <laughs> so they yeah. live there. They live down there on the intercoastal waterway now. So, mm -hmm. I see, loving yeah, life. Right. Now, uh, in your family, man, real? Hmm? You're a family man. Oh, uh, yeah. big time. How Heck many? Yeah. How many little guys you got? Little guys and gals. <laughs> I, I got two grown girls. Oh, they're grown. Yeah, nice. 20, 24 and oh, yeah. 19. Oh, they're out. Yeah. All right. I guess they're out. So mom they, and dad. They're at the house so much, I don't know if they're out or not. <laughs> so they're here in Nashville. Yeah. That's great. And what do they do? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, Allie went to Alabama and she's now doing um, real estate. And she does like four or five different things. The thing she makes the most, this is my oldest daughter, she makes more money pet sitting for people than she does anything yeah. else. Wow. It's unreal. She'll go pet sit for these rich people and, and she'll get there and there'll be a pile of cash sitting on the... Does she get to stay at the nice house and watch them? Yeah. Oh, that's great. And some of them, she didn't have to stay there. She just had to, you know, peek her head in. Now, is that the alley that made its way into Tattoos on This Town? Yep. Okay. That's her. Oh, right what you know. That's right. I like that. And then Emma's my youngest and she's at Belmont. Oh, okay. The music business? Mm-hmm. Oh, she's going to follow in the footsteps. Well, or I, I couldn't do the business or, part. Yeah. I'm going to have her handle my affairs one day. Mm. <laughs> now, was this correct that I, I, Wiki, did you sing background vocals on No Fences, Garth's record? Yeah, on the cut. Wolves. 1990. That's how I met my wife, too. Okay, tell us that story. Oh, God, really? 
Well, you said that Wiki was incorrect on that story, so let's stretch. Let's well, set yeah, straight. we did not meet in college, like Wikipedia says. <laughs> I was singing with the quartet um, called Indian River, and we were playing in Beaumont, Texas. Sounds like a casino, right? It was actually in Beaumont, Texas. At the it was a Bob Hope High School benefit thing, mm. and Garth was closing the show, and he had just he was working on the second record, No Fences, and I think the dance was out on the radio. It yeah. just come out. And we did our sound check, and he was sitting out front. Him and Bob Dole were sitting out front. And they heard us do our sound check. And then Bob came up to us and said, Hey, Garth would love for y'all to sing on No Fences record if, if you're interested when we get back. <laughs> we're like, Yeah, duh. So we did. And, and of course, my wife was running Major Bob Music, working for Bob <laughs> okay. and Garth at the time. So I was, uh, that's how I met her. Yeah. And Major Bob. In addition to having the massive publishing company, managed Garth. Yes, Bob right? Dole managed him. And when I was touring with Susan Ashton in 1999, that's right. We covered your song called "Closer," and yep. we played it on the Donnie Marie Show and Austin City Limits. Oh, that's so wild. That's crazy. Closer was on our second record, mine and Kelly Shiver's second record yeah. that never came out. So that never came out. No. So it left it open for um, Susan to. Yep. Is that why she did it? Yep. You want to hear a little bit of that? Yeah, why not? Come on, man. God, you're going back. Going way back. Is that Shannon? Is that our cut? It's just me and you and the man in the moon shining down. A blanket of stars up above and a quilt on the ground. <laughs> I Years. I've waited so long to get you all alone in the dark. Now your music is on Spotify. I just want to hold you till I feel the beat of your heart. I want to get closer. Is this changing? Closer. Over, I get that's, uh, that's Stuart Smith playing guitar. I, yeah. the Eagles now. I uh, hear the gospel influence in that. Oh, do for, you? For sure. I, st I still can't get rid of it. I feel like if you I'm can, not trying to get rid of it. I feel like if you can sing gospel music, you can sing anything. Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. What an amazing training ground for you. Now, you were talking about Rearview Town, and I think you would be okay with this. We were talking about your demos, but everyone knows the Aldine song that was just a number one. But this is... You've got the demo. I have it. your demo. <laughs> Listen to these golden pipes. This is you singing your song. Wiped the footprints off my dash Tore up those sun faded photographs Threw them in the wind, y'all can have her back I'm out of here Stuck my middle finger up in the sky Flipped off that y'all come back sign Looked in the mirror one last time And watched it disappear I'd cut it. <laughs> you already did. <laughs> Is that yeah. available? I came in the studio that day. Y'all were tracking too. Yeah, I, I you, was video and I got you stuff by. Yeah, that's cool. You're like, let you check on your baby. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You always got to check on your baby. Yeah, yeah. Now, looking back at your career, do you have some other things that you know for a fact are just like you're like, damn, I'm so proud of. Like, yeah, there's so many flats cuts and. Is there something that just you're like, wow? Hmm. What's your most favorite? And it doesn't have to be, a, it could be a B-side, you know? Um, God, there's a bunch of those, man. There's a, I've got, I got a bunch of songs, even on Al Dean's records, on Flats records that I wish would have been singles that never were. Did you do Staring at the Sun? Was it Yes. Good? Oh, my God. So we talk all the time in the Al Dean camp about 
doing a, a record of all our favorite B-sides, yeah. like re-recording them yeah. or, you know. So Staring at the Sun, I just think is, oh man. Wow. That was, that's one of them. Mm-hmm. See You When I See You is one of them. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, God. Uh, let me see. What else do you have? He's, he's, I Don't Drink Anymore. I Don't Drink Anymore. Better at Being Who I Am. Yes. Drink One For Me. Yeah. High New Neon. Yeah. Uh, old Boots. Yeah. If This Truck Could Talk. Yeah. I mean, you could you could tell your songs instantly. <laughs> instantly. <laughs> the storytelling, the melodies. Man, if my truck could talk, I wish, that, my, I wish that people could have heard that one. Yeah. Or more of them. I mean, the true fans... That you know, oh, they, yeah. they celebrate the body of work. They know them. Yeah, they know them. Can we hear a little bit of this staring at the sun? Yeah. Oh my god, it's good. This is Spotify. Let's wish me luck. <laughs> it's like an old R and B song. She's like staring at the sun. Could easily blind someone Other women I see none She's like staring at the sun That's a fave. Man, Knox and y'all cut some oh, seriously good records. God bless that Michael Knox that has that relationship with you, man. It's, oh, man. You know. And he lets me sing on every cut that I get on, on Jason, and, and I love singing with Jason. Man, you love... I can tell you love music just the way you're reacting to it. Right. You know who else right. loves music? School of Rock. The School of Rock! <laughs> All of our friends at the School of Rock, Angie and Kelly McCray, we appreciate you sponsoring our show. I've known you for about a decade. You guys are running one of the Top notch school of rocks in the country. There's 250 locations in the world. You guys are top notch. It, parents, if you have kids, you want to get them off the couch. You want to get them away from the video games, doing something constructive, learning a life skill, learning an instrument, singing, playing the drums, playing the bass, playing the guitar, being in a band. The school of rock, they're always doing events. They're always doing live shows all over the place. I've been involved with them forever. I love it. I got Email addresses for you, Nashville at schoolerock.com or Franklin at schoolerock.com. Tell them I sent you. Nice. Damn. What uh, do you think about this music? Isn't this, I mean, this is great music. When you hear a song in its, nat- in its initial environment, like on a demo like that, it's really pretty cool yeah. to hear it, you know, just, just in that organic element, you know, just, just how it came Speaking up of which, we should probably play a song. Really? You want to play one of your songs? Not really. (laughs) Yeah, you do. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Learn by doing, I definitely think, resonates with what we're about here at the School of Rock. I'm Angie McCright, and I'm the owner of the School of Rock in Franklin and Nashville. I would say that the majority of kids that come in have either been sitting in their bedrooms watching YouTube, learning how to play, or they've taken music lessons at some point in their life. We do have a lot of beginners. It doesn't matter what level you're at. You can participate in our programs, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced. We don't teach music to put on shows. We put on shows to teach music. Connect with School of Rock today. Search School of Rock Franklin or Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. Uh, so this is the first time this is happening on the Rich Redman Show. Yeah. And in a city like Nashville that is teeming with amazing singer-songwriters, we're gonna it's gonna be a regular thing from now on. But okay. you are popping our musical cherry. Really? Yeah. First time. I'm the ever. first one. No nobody first ever performs on here? Never. Yeah. I should get should I have Wendell Mobley and Tony Martin come in here? We Wendell's both, we coming. We're staring at the sun together. Well, you got to tell Wendell to come because he said, "Rich, I don't know if it's my thing." He was going to pull a Justin. Oh on my me. gosh, it's probably not. <laughs> he wants to play live. I said, "Heck yeah!" Really? Yeah, he wants to do. Um, 
a little more summertime or one of those tunes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've written, you know, most of my career was with him. Heck yeah. You what do you want to do? What do you want to um, We were going to do Night Train, right? You see, I'm not used to playing with, with a backbeat. So I'm, now you're making me work. Now, and well, now I'll, I have to think and stay because if, if I speed up, you're just going to keep up with me. I'll listen to you. Don't make me keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll mess it up. So that's why I don't play in the studio. You, you kick it off and I'll fall in. You're going to do Night Train. Yeah. All right. Thinking about you all day, baby. And waiting on that sun to go on down. Well, you say I pick you up after or slide over, we slip out to the outskirts of town. Got a blanket and a fifth of comfort. A little something to knock on for years It's supposed to get a little cool tonight Looks like I'm gonna have to hold you tight But now I'm on full me road That spot nobody knows Park a truck and we'll tell you gonna run And hurry up girl, I hear it coming Thought of you was driving me insane Come on, baby, let's go listen to the night train Yeah, I hope it's gonna be long And if we're lucky, it's moving slow Wouldn't mind if it lasted all night Lying next to you on that hillside Let's go By the mile on Full Mill Road That spot nobody knows We'll park the truck and we'll tell you gonna run in Hurry up girl, I hear it coming Got a moon and a billion stars The sound of steel and old boxcars I thought of you was driving me insane Nobody knows. Park the truck and we'll tell you how we're running. Hurry up, girl, I hear it coming. Got a moon and a billion stars. The sound of steel in the old box cars. I thought of you was driving me insane. Come on, baby, let's go listen to the night train. Amazing feel! What a voice! <laughs> yes! Thank you! Really beautiful, man. We've never done that together. Was that easy That's to good. play to or what? And I and I and I played so much of your music, but to do it together in the same right? room, fantastic. It was awesome. So we mentioned Wendell. Uh, so and we mentioned Michael Delaney. Yeah. Is that like when he, it's there in the inner circle? Right. They're my regulars, you know. Um, Who are some other guys you cheat with, like? Uh, well, Tony Martin's one of my regulars. Mm-hmm. Um, Kelly Lovelace is one of my regulars. Lee Miller's one of my regulars. Yeah. Um, and I write. I've written a lot of songs with Jason Sellers and uh-huh. and uh, who else? I've written. A, I've written some with Bobby Pinson. Of course, yeah, he was on like Rearview it. Town. He was on. It was me and him and Lovelace on Rearview Town. Um, 
I mean, and then we're just starting to introduce a bunch of other ones. I'm, they're actually booking me with, with some new ones. What do you think of the new kids that are coming to town with their laptops and their loops and all that? Is it? A lot of them are stupid gifted, you know, yeah. and, and I used to, I used to be like one of those guys that was like, no, I don't, we don't need any new stuff in here, you know, yeah. and it's like, and, and then the, when I opened up and started listening to these kids coming in here and doing these tracks and stuff, I was like, yeah, yeah. it's inspiring. I broke a damn sweat on that, buddy. A little bit. That was great. Yeah. I broke a sweat was for awesome. You. I was schwitzing. <laughs> Convention. I totally was. I was into it. No, I was yeah. into that groove. You know how a lot of people, I mean, that was really special. Um, you know how a lot of people have, they'll say, oh, he's a top line guy. He's a lyric guy. He's a groove guy. He's a uh, he's a melody guy. I feel like you're everything. I, I mean. F- I Well, I, I feel like I'll, I am, mm-hmm. you know, because they all start different. They either start with an idea or a first line or a groove or, or whatever. You know, how country feels started it started with this right here. Oh it was man! Like, it was like it was like we were in the writing. You know, I, I ain't gonna play the whole thing, but it's like, yeah. You were raised on an asphalt farm. Whatever. <laughs> I just saw the back. We just we played a, a Luke's um, big thing in Mexico. Crash my playa. <laughs> We were there all week, <laughs> yeah. and so Lee was backstage, and everyone was backstage. It uh-huh. was like it was like all of country music was there. It was crazy. That's how that song started, right there. Like um, with, yeah. it's almost like a, a no words, a quasi ACDC yeah. feel. Yeah, uh, ah, we just had Tommy Harden, and he played drums on that. Did he really? Yeah. Man, this is what a small town. It's such a small town. You know, we're kind of putting it all together. So sometimes it just starts with a riff, sometimes a title, yep. sometimes a melody. Yeah. Something tells me you just wander the house all day just singing melodies. It happens sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, when nobody's there because they get tired of it. You record it? In you your feel iPhone? like it just pops in your head? Yeah, I do, on my on my phone, man, it's all my titles and all my melodies and all that stuff. And if if people can just get a hold of that phone, I'll sell it. <laughs> they can buy it. I'll sell it right now. Everything I got's for sale. Right. You ever have people come up to you and be like, "Hey, man, I got an idea for a song." Oh, you what, kidding me? Partner, <laughs> right? Because I have an idea for a song. I knew that was coming. No, no, I knew it was no, coming. Don't do no. it. I knew it was coming. I'm going to do it. He's going to do it. Hey, if it's good, <laughs> if it's good, I'll write it. I can promise you that. Well, you're going to cut me in? <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. <sighs> so, we do, do you, it right here now. What do you think about the streaming service? I mean, I felt like when you were having finding some success with the flats, with I Melt and all that kind of stuff, and Chesney, There Goes My Life. It was like the the golden age of mm-hmm. songwriting royalties, and because we just had Danny Rader in here from you know Keith Urban's band, and he's kind of leading the charge with the union for the hashtag band together, where the musicians are going to get paid for streaming services and all. It's affected you guys too, the songwriters. Oh, and, big time! I mean, you're making fractions of a penny. Oh, we made our I made my retirement on mechanicals. Yeah, because we were getting multiple cuts on flats and Aldean back when the records were still selling. Selling, you know, and we we would have you know four and five songs on on each record and that was like the heyday for mechanicals man it was yeah. great you know everybody's selling four or five million records and I'm like okay sock it away well that's gotta feel good to think uh, to yourself hey my future is taken care of like I had this you know I mean you've been paying dues if you've been playing music since you were in your pre-teens um, and now you're maybe you're in your early 50s that's 40 plus years yeah Wikipedia so. said I was 55 and it's not true well it's it's right around the corner you're 39 Okay. Yeah. Hey, I'm about to be 50, and my girlfriend and my mom are planning a massive party, and I'm going big, man. Where y'all going? You know, I, I might do it. Uh, you know, at uh, Aldine's rooftop bar or something. You know, because it's like it's right there. You know. Yeah. Probably get some preferential. I've never treatment. been in that building. Well, it's a nice. You know, like all of them down there. It's like four or five stories rooftop bar. I heard there's drinks named after my songs. That sound and maybe some food. Really? Yeah. Yeah, like um, fry over states or something oh my like God. fry over steaks, <laughs> fry over cakes, <laughs> fry over steaks. <laughs> I love it. Tortillas it's a on new this idea too. If they're not tortillas doing it, on this hey, town. Yeah. If they're not doing it, they're gonna be doing no, it. There, yeah. There's a lot of uh, quirky names for the food. Ham town. Yeah, there's a lot of towns. Town. Crazy town, Hick town, Rearview. We have a lot of towns. Big town. Yeah. Nothing town. Nothing town. Was that yours? Yes. Dang, that's one of my favorites too. Yeah, Knox always told me, man, we should have released that one. We should have released that. I'm like, I know you should have. Johnny Crab My wife thinks you should have released we that. We just had, well, we had Lindsay L on, and, and I told her that in my drum clinics for about 
you know, I worked with her 10 years ago and she's finding some great success. She just had her big number one with Brantley Gilbert. Yep. Um, I said, I'm still performing this song that we worked on like a decade ago and I always have people at the drum clinics. I say, hey, be my A&R team. Listen to this song. Would you have released this? And they're all like, oh yeah. yeah. But you know, it just doesn't always work out that way. No. It's a, it's a numbers game. It's a crapshoot. Yep. You know. Yep. And I'm, uh, you know, every time we get one, I'm so thankful. Yeah. We've been so blessed. Yeah. So you're, you're writing four times a week, um, but back in the day, were you writing 10 times a week? Actually, my most successful period was when I wrote the least amount of songs. I and, guess it was just more about quality than quantity then, I guess. Right. It was more of a song competition town, you know? Yeah. And I probably wrote the least amount of songs then than I do or then I, you know, had been recently in the past few years, but I'm feeling it again, and I'm really, really, you know, fired up about loving writing again. So you're having like a creative renaissance right now. Yes. Wow. I thought about slowing down, and word was going around that I was getting out and I'm done, and I and and I'm like, wait a minute, and I may and that thought may have crossed my mind. Like I'll decide when I'm done. Well, it's like it probably did cross my mind, and 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 now I'm just like, wait a minute, man. I still can, I can do this. Yeah. I can still sing. I can still think. I, I, you know, I think. Yeah. And now that I'm on my big workout program, man, I'm going to be thinking even clearer. So what's your workout program? Are you doing like high intensity Dude, training this or more, just, you know. This morning, man, I, I got, I went with my wife. I got up at 530. Our thing is at seven. We're doing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Oh, back and buys, chest and tries, doing yeah, it like that. Well, listen, it's not, it's an hour of nonstop. Oh, that's good. The ropes. Oh, very good. So you have a trainer. Yes. Good for you. Yeah. So we can expect songs about working out now? No. <laughs> yeah. Going to the gun show? Let's get physical. Yeah. Gun show's coming. So what is this? The, is this the Fra uh, Franklin YMCA or something like that? The one, Maryland Farms. Oh, yeah. Maryland Farms, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. I got Now up. people are going to show yeah, up no, at no. Maryland Farms. Oh. <laughs> they're going to pitch you songs. They're going to do. Um, so do you, do you think uh, Franklin do you, it's for, for people that are not self motivated or just need that extra kick? Like I do Orange Theory, I do Barry's Boot Camp. It's like 60 minutes. And you you shouldn't wear that jacket on the show, by the way. You what? should show them. Oh, my the guns? Show them. The you guns. guys have guns, though. You, you've developed some guns. Thanks, bud. Show them. <laughs> Come on, we'll see them. No, I'm not that guy. When you're on Come stage, on. what kind of shirt do you wear? He wears a tank. I just wear a black shirt. I wear all black. Have you ever gone shirtless? Sure. I never had that. We We've talked had this about this conversation that. earlier. No, we talked about that. I, I think that the guys that can go shirtless are like this long, lean, skinny guys. No, like Tommy Lee, I know, Taylor but you Hawkins. need to do the Tommy Lee glove thing and no shirt. You got to do I've it. I've worn gloves before, like Tico Torres, and no pants. <laughs> just underwear you guys are nuts okay so you're working out you're getting healthy I want to talk about you <laughs> let's talk about Rich it's oh, your show yeah. oh guys <laughs> come on there's a couple start. of these buttons that we overuse <laughs> you know what I tell songwriters all the time I say look it the things have gotten so crazy that if you want to get a cut it's probably not going to come from your plugger or your publisher, you're probably going to have to write with the artist or have a way to get that to them directly. Yeah. Is there something to that? Yes. The system worked back in the day, though, where your plugger can actually break through the noise. Well, everybody was looking for outside songs. Yeah. You know, then, and and I think it's starting to get back to that. I'm noticing some more newer artists starting to look for songs again. Yeah. Um, Certain and, types? No, just, well, sometimes, you know, but I think story. they're just looking for hits. They're looking for better songs. They're, I think they really are. I that song wins. They want, to they want to start depending on the town again. Yeah. Right. And I love that. But, I mean, a lot of writers are writing with a certain singer in mind, a certain, certain artist in I mind. I never have. I you just wrote songs. I never I mean, have. A lot of your stuff is storytelling. Like, you know, going back to the days of Kenny Rogers, you know, uh, Coward of the County and, and yeah. the Gant. That, those, that's got to make a comeback, you know? Well, I mean, you've been writing songs like that the whole time, and the the artist that is gonna, they're gonna, it'll find a home. It will. It's like Flower States was eight years old. Yeah, I really, you know, and that's like, uh, I always felt like it had a home. And eight mm -hmm. years goes by, and boom, Al Dean falls in love with it yeah. and turns it into a, a hit. And I, and I, I have other songs that still aren't cut that I feel that way about yeah. still. Do you use the same demo players all the time, or do you no. whoever's available? No, I, I've been using. I let Ilya. Oh, Ilya! Yeah. I, I let Ilya kind of head it up because I trust everybody he gets. Mm -hmm. Do you? Hey, do you remember when you guys played on a, on a demo of mine? Y'all did a session for Major Bob one time, and I used mm. everybody. I used well, I know that Tully. 
Was Probably there. me, you, me, and Kurt, Kurt and Tully. Was, it had to. It, I know it was y'all three. I don't know who else was was in the room. Yeah, maybe it was Danny Rader. But y'all uh, played on a song that uh, is uh, it's called uh, "Everybody Wants You." Ooh, that I still love. Oh my god, I'd love to hear that. I mean, it, and y'all, you guys played on it. Oh, it you're right. So and there was good. a band that Justin Niebank produced called London, Texas, that didn't take off, and they cut that song. How do you remember that? I remember that. We recorded it at Blackbird. You mean the dude could sing it? Yeah, but there were, maybe he had some computer help. Because I'm but, telling you, oh, they had, man, I'm telling you, this song was up there. I mean, is it on that. Spotify? No, it I don't, can't be. It's a demo floating around somewhere. Uh, you know who would have it? Tully Kennedy has it somewhere in a, in a hard drive. You think? Yeah. He saves everything. He's got hundreds of tracks that he I wonder if I have on. it on my phone. I'm going to have to follow up with you. Yeah. On the magic phone. <clears throat> you know what, Jim? We yeah. probably need to take a quick break and pay some bills. I hey, the bathroom. we'll be right back. <laughs> hey. And so, um, so you're not on, uh, you don't have a website, right? No, and you I don't, don't think and, I do. You don't do social media. Well, I used to, but I got, I quit. What happened? Uh, I just, I got tired of looking at it. That's right. I you know, what? Two, every I time I turn up, you know, if I, you know, every time I pulled it up, Instagram is Rich Redmond shit everywhere. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm trying to I'm trying to cover my ass so I can retire someday. Hey, it's good. Yeah, you got to write songs. Yours are interesting because I love I loved and I don't do it anymore, but I loved all the videos, especially the stage videos, drumming and stage. Oh videos. yes, that's good. Hey, you were the innovator in that. Well, I don't know, but there's a threshold. You know, getting to a point where you can actually be a viral entity or a household name is so hard. You never saw my 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 drum post on my Instagram. Did oh you? yeah, you did. Well, you were playing. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Cool. And it's been a long time. I think I commented on it. It was like maybe two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I donated those drums to the school. <laughs> no, it was it was uh, the Rosanna riff. From oh, yeah. You should be playing that? Yes. That's what I was playing. Wow. You could do that? It's a good one. The halftime shuffle. I don't know why, but the right hand just does what it's supposed to do. And I don't, I'm not trying. It's it's just, it just follows. I'm trying to think how we should uh, create a nice button up on this. Is there something that you are curious about that we can go into? I am. Back? I am. Okay, great. Yeah. Do you want to do your uh, odd question of the day? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll bring that up. What's it called? Uh, random question of the show. Nice. Yeah. All right. And we are back and we are talking with one of the greatest songwriters in Ever. the world. Jim, the you've greatest. been sitting on your hands. You got a, What do you got? You got something? I'm kind of intimidated over here. I'm just, I don't know what to ask, you know? What? I'm you like, saw this list of credits. I'm, not, I'm like, you know, I want to pitch him some song ideas and see if we can make a million bucks together. <laughs> I don't think you can make a million anymore. No, okay. Yeah. No. One of the things that I, I'm curious about is <laughs> <No>. <laughs> at some point in my life, you know, the next phase, I've always had a hankering of trying my hand at songwriting. And if I have a pile of cash where I don't have to worry about, you know, that stress is yes, taken you, out of it. Yes, you can pay me to write with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's the next thing but I mean is that you know something like a guy like me how do I get started I mean you know because I've always been a wordsmith of sorts well I mean, you're already in I mean you you know Rich true and if you write a freaking smash and he loves it and you demo it he can get it in the right hands hey, you need to do that every little cut I have when I say little that, has been by writing with in the room with the artist Cold Four, the Wolf Brothers. I'm in the room, in the trenches. But every time I, I I have a song idea and I tell you about it, you give me the look. Well, because they're soft. What look is that? What look give, is what, it? What's the look? Give me the look now. <sighs> really? Yeah. Because he's just a million miles. Well, away. that's it. That's an inspiring look right there. But maybe, isn't it? maybe you know, hey, maybe there's <laughs> something to it. You know. Well, keep trying, but I think you've already got your hands full with your playing, with your. Podcasting, you got a lot going on. Well, I was afraid of what he's going to say right and there. And he lives in he lives <laughs> in Man, Spring you got Hill. Your hands full of your <laughs> stuff with my <laughs> Neil. He lives in Spring Hill. He spends half his life commuting. This guy. No, I don't. I'm, I'm always in Spring Hill mostly. Yeah. I mean, now nowadays I am. But I mean, you know, that's that's kind of the thing is uh, you just come to town and I guess involve, get involved with it. You know? that's, that's I don't know how to play guitar. I don't know how to come up with a melody. Me either. But the thing is, <laughs> but I mean. Coming up with the words, even when I was in radio in Vegas, we used to do little parody songs and things of that nature. And, and a buddy of mine and I on his radio station, we put our heads together and come up with some incredible stuff. Just yeah. putting two heads together. Yeah, That's yeah. how you do it. Yeah. yeah. You have fun with it. Yeah. Was there drinking involved? Uh, occasionally. Yeah. Do you yeah. do that occasionally? I have, yes. For, for, for writing? Yes. If I've gone out of town or something um, and we're doing an all-nighter or whatever. Yeah, retreat. Um, 
we'll do you know we'll drink but i mean I'm, i don't get wasted or anything like that yeah um but yeah we'll loosen it up and, little, go, and uh, go all night you know a little creative lubrication <clears throat> i can't if i drink too much i go to sleep yeah yeah you put me right out i'll tell you what but i mean you hear certain phrases that just resonate and you're like there's something there yeah for sure so like you know what I, and I can't do it I, I i give all the credit or most of the credit to my co-writers because i can't do it you find the guys that you work with and i couldn't have done it without them i mean right. Wendell Wendell's one of, one of the best lyricists I've ever known. And Wendell Mobley, yeah. Yeah, and we bounce off each other all the time. But how much like the you know the golden ideas versus the ones that are crap. You know, you got to have the moxie to be to That's right. to bring them up and put them out there. Yep. You know, no idea is a bad idea, but yeah, they are. You know, it's one of those things that you got to get past that, I guess. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz eventually you're going to have a golden nugget. Well, you mentioned if my truck could talk. You want to share that with our audience? A verse and a chorus on this? I mean, I love the idea of how you took a truck. I don't know how to play it because I don't ever do it live. Well, we, I, I got it right here oh. uh, on the spotify Nader. But the idea that- Is you, ASCAP keeping up with us? This is uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I'll be done. <laughs> That's why he asks. He asks the people's permission. I, I know. I didn't. I didn't ask your permission. <clears throat> I don't see an ASCAP sticker. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> the idea of making a truck- have human qualities that's like, now that was was that an idea that you toyed with that's for an while? idea that, that the the kid that we wrote it with andrew pates who lives in jackson mississippi who's a hell of a piano player slash singer mm -hmm. i think i think disney did that in cars yeah yeah what if cars had feelings well check it out here it is jimbo <laughs> it was his idea <laughs> sticky finger sorry she said Twelve gauge oh four buck shot floorboard don't ask fence post door dent let's just leave it at that Dirt on me, yeah, I'd be of a tree. If my truck talk, I'd have the egg out on the wires, bore on the gas, set it on fire, anything to shut it up. It's been good, me, but it knows too much. You've seen it all. I'd have to find a river bank and roll it on. If my truck could talk, those two headers. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Now, first yeah. of all, the melody is an earwig, and then the story, it's got dirt on me. Hello. Right? Incredible. Was that yours, that line? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll play songs that I wrote in my little drum clinics. I'm like, I wrote that line. I'm going to give you gold right now. That's mine. Go for it. There's right. some lines I remember. What you got? That's what she said. I've already wrote it. Did you? Yeah. Okay, never mind. Years ago. Mm -hmm. that, is that something? Years that, was ago. it based on The Office or uh, Wayne's know. World? What was the premise of that? I don't remember. <laughs> I'm not going to bore these people with me sitting here trying to think what that song was yeah. about. <laughs> that, I mean, that that is just... <laughs> That is fun, my friend. Wow. So, so what's next? What do you? What does your next five years look like? What, what's exciting? You? Millions of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> the next five years. That's what I told my wife. I said that's the word for the next half decade. Millions. Millions. I, I, she walks out the door. I say millions. Yeah. Now is your wife still in publishing? No. She, she got, got out. completely out of the music business, and it was really when we started having kids. And she kind of just eased her way out, you know. And she didn't work for a long time. Mm -hmm. And now she's back doing, selling Rodan and Fields and killing oh, it. Cool. She's going to be making more than me in about five years, I'm afraid. She, uh, she go down to our friends at Mercedes-Benz and Music City and Not yet, partake she's in the, that close. She's like right. this close from getting well, They have on. the parties there, the R&F parties. Oh, they do? Yeah, you know, with the white Benz. I love that y'all know that. Y'all know about R&F. So it's, um, it's a I, cosmetics for women, right? Yes. Yeah, it's all for natural, men too. organic based and stuff. Yes, yeah. and it's, they've just moved. I mean, it's like going global. Like huge, just like the biggest skincare line in the world now. Oh, it's that's crazy. crazy. My mom used to sell Mary Kay and Tupperware and all that. It's good. I know a Mary Kay lady. Yeah, the pink caddies. Yeah, 
Man. So, Jim, what is your uh, awkward question of the day? Awkward question of the day? Yeah, it's what's your idea? It's a new, sorry, it's a new thing we're offering on the show. We are. Let me uh, pull one up. I had it written down from Danny Raider's session. Yeah, so that last song was like Kurt and Adam on electrics, Danny Raider on acoustic. So if, we, if everyone's been listening to the show, those folks have been guests. That's right. That's and right. that's how small Nashville is. And they is. didn't play love. Okay, this is a new Shame feature. on them. <laughs> Random question of the show. It can be sponsored. I'm just saying. Mercedes-Benz Music City. And um, this is just a random question. It has nothing to do with what we've been talking about. It's just stuff that I think about uh, when the lights go out. Can I go to the bathroom then? <laughs> <laughs> Posed to our guest at the moment. So what are your thoughts on our Federal Reserve banking system? Oh, my God. Really? You're going to ask a songwriter? Well, that? we're talking about money, so... So you're it a money songwriter. I don't ever do the money. My wife does all of it. I couldn't tell you That's extreme what's going right there, on. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. I couldn't tell you what's going on with my but, stuff. But, I, but you just know that if you go to a Dairy Queen, it's not a big deal to get a blizzard. You can afford it. You could probably put the expensive gas in your car. I you don't, don't have do to worry it. about no, these I, things. I do the low grade. Yeah? Yeah. What are, you what, what are you driving? What are you driving? Lana's grandfather said, "Don't be putting that hot test. That's, that's a scam. Don't dare it." And everyone, when he, when he told me that, I was like, "Okay, I'm just." Jim put, sold cars, so you like, got to you got to do it for Mercedes. You got to yeah. put high test in there. You do, yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. It's just how the engine runs. Okay. That's what they use. I treated myself to an Audi for three years. I, I turned it back in, and then. Tully goes and got himself. He got himself an Audi. Did he? He did. did he, he, goes, get? he goes. I can't ever return after this. I was like, really? no. Once you go German, you're you're it's nice. You're crushed. Yeah. Really. You're ruined for life. You've never. Uh, I mean, what? I've driven a German car, but I, I didn't fall in love with it. I Just still drive a 2011 Dodge Ram out there, and it hadn't given me a lick of trouble. Yeah, but you and like gonna, to go hunting. I know. Yeah. But I'm going to drive it till the wheels fall off. Now, what is it that you hunt? Are you? Do you ever uh, work with the Buck Commander guys or the Duck Commander guys or the? No. No. no, I did see one time on the. Um, I was watching that show one time, and they had a show called Texas Was You, and it was like they they were in Texas hunting, and they used our song title for the title of their show. Wow, now that was one that should have been a single, right? That yeah. raise your eyebrow. And, yeah, yeah. Like, and I'm remember. like, uh, no, I have I've never been hunting with them. I've never been hunting without Dean, mm -hmm. ever. You That's know, cool. I don't ever get involved. Neither have I. Ever. Neither do I. And what's up with that? Make that know. happen, man. What's up with that? I well, mean, we, we talk, we talk deer them. hunting a lot, you know, on, on t via text and all yeah. that stuff, but uh, we've never hunted together, and we'll I go, love turkey hunting. We'll go That's probably my first love. Yeah, yeah. We, we just we just had a guest on that just shot the new music video for John Anderson. He's a big turkey hunter, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Unmistakable voice. The, so, uh, well, getting back to your Dodge. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, I uh, I do a lot of videography for Mercedes Benz in Music City, and we took one of their mid grade SUVs, Mudden down in the bayou yeah. in Baton Rouge. And uh, one of the guys there that was kind of hosting us, he says, yeah, it's all good and money back there. You're going to get this thing stuck. We wanted to get the car stuck to show off some of its uh, features. Like they had a certain feature on it to get it unstuck. And uh, he had an F-250 and he goes, oh, these, my truck would get stuck back there. I'm like, oh, great. That sounds good. This friggin' thing would not get stuck. You're uh, kidding. I kid you not. What kind of Mercedes was it? Was it was a GLE. It was a mid-size SUV. My, I, I took one and pulled my camper with it because I have a truck too and I pull my camper with my truck. That thing pulled it like it wasn't even back there. So I wonder if I should States. tell my wife to get that one if she, in, when the time comes. It's a nice car. Mid-size GLE. GLE. It's a nice car. Because if it won't get stuck, see, I do a lot of deer hunting in Louisiana. Dude. In the swamp. Get a GLS. Wow. It's bigger. Mm. Trust me. You think she'd let me take it to the stand? I'll show you the video. Get it yeah, we got this thing covered. Huh? Yeah, it's good, man. I like. Well, that's it. kind of that's kind of embarrassing for the guy with the F two fifty. That's well, he a little was, he, embarrassing. He, he was uh, he was kind of like, hey, I I, I would guess I was wrong. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he was a uh, MLB player, former huh. uh, baseball player. Well, Ryan I tell you, I tell you what. Usually, I, I ask our guests, "Hey, what's a great way for people to find you?" They don't. You're, you're you don't have a website. I don't want to be found. You don't, don't have the Instagram. Found. Watch this podcast. You can find me for just about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and we were so lucky to have you, man. Whatever. So lucky to if have you. If you can find him, he will certainly take your songwriting. Um, they're invitations. on me. Hey, they're they're on me about getting the the social media thing going. Really, as yeah, a writer, yeah, and just just. You know, so everybody knows I'm still relevant, I guess. You know, he probably has so many stories he needs his own podcast. What? Yeah, probably. you thought about ever doing your own podcast with yeah. having your songwriter buddies come I on? would have to drink a lot if I did <laughs> that. That would be a great podcast. Just to get through it. Yeah. 
I would. I'd have to drink a lot just to even. Because I'm not good with I'm not good sitting still with a microphone in front of my face. You did. You did a good job today, man. I, I did. I really appreciate you coming to spend this. What is some advice you would give to a new songwriter that just moved to Nashville yesterday? Go home. <laughs> no. That's what Tully would say. I know. N- no. Uh, how do they gosh, navigate that? That's a question that I never know how to answer other than just, um, you got to not take no. For an answer. You know? It's whether your whether your songs are, are cuttable or not, it's don't take you know just don't hear that word. I would imagine even being open to suggestion with your songs, even though it's like your baby. Uh, don't be afraid of somebody else coming in and saying, "Hey, let's switch this around. Yeah. And try this." And that's right. I've, and I've gotten to the age now where where I will be honest with people, like brutally honest with them. I think it's the best thing for them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it, my wife was with me early on when I when I didn't I didn't like it. But when they would criticize the song and they're just like, this ain't done. Yeah. And, really? this is like, and I would go, what? So your wife was a tough critic in oh, the yeah. beginning. Yeah, she's one of the best song people I've ever known. Wow. And then she just got out. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes there's a there's a lifespan on our things that we choose and then we just have a change of heart. Yeah. Try something else that makes us happy. Well, I think that's good advice. I think the idea is that just persist and, and never yep. give up. You know, no. And believe in yourself. Come to town, man. It's There's room. There's always room. There's always room. Because I guarantee you with, you know, with 10 new ones coming in, there's probably 20 leaving. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. You know, but um, there's always room. That is true. And and don't take no and, and get your song slung around to somebody. Go play the open mic bluebird thing. I know it's hard to get in there. I've heard it's really hard to do that. Yeah. Or start your own open mic. Yeah, there's a lot of those around town. You know, just doing the, the songwriter rounds. And I'm, you know, I made a living for the first couple of years just going around and meeting singer songwriters and playing djembe and cajon and seeing how all that all worked. But I would definitely suggest if any songwriters come to town to definitely study this man's body of work and you see how he puts it all together and the, the science and the art of it all. It's very impressive. And I appreciate you being here. And thanks for letting me play that song with you, man. What Thank did you learn? Thank you, bro. Really great, man. Um, man, I learned that if uh, you come to Nashville and you have the talent to back it up and you persist you will be successful yeah yeah i fell into it accidentally yeah so i wanted to be an artist first and discovered i could write well you are an artist when you start thinking about what is an artist you are a creative being that writes things that that make a difference in people's lives yeah it's a really it's a it's a high calling well it's it's a payoff when you go to an aldean show and you and he goes into one of your songs, and I'm at, you're at the soundboard, and you look, and you look around, and everybody's singing it. You're like, what? how about that? That no, came from here. Nothing more satisfying than that. What was the first time that, that happened? Was it at a Rascal Flat? Yeah, it was show? at a Rascal Flat show. Like actually. I Melt or something. It like was that? in actually in Huntsville, ah. and it was like uh, I want to say it was Fast Cars and Freedom because I didn't go to much shows, and I just decided to go to one, and. Uh, Everybody's singing that song, and I'm just like, oh, "You gotta be kidding me!" Did you get goosebumps? This is, yeah, it's, just, oh, yeah. it's like, God, this is why we do this. Yeah. It's crazy. And they're retiring. I know, right? Twenty years. That went by quick. Done. It went by fast. Because I've been part of their career since the beginning. Yeah. And it went by quick. Yeah, you were definitely part of many people's stories. Very impressive, man. Thank you so much for coming over, man. Thanks for asking, dude. Really great. This was awesome. Thank it you was so great. much for having Coffee me. Coffee was great. And tell you. Taking this mug <laughs> home. Definitely take the mug and tell Wendell to come do the show. He'll, bo- he'll do it. He's booked in February. He'll do it. Jim, thanks for your time and talent. And You're your welcome. Cr- and your mostly great questions. Um, <laughs> thank you, sure. School of Rock, for sponsoring our show. And we appreciate all you guys. Hey, if you have suggestions or praise, we have an email address, therichredmanshow at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe and share rate and review please guys it takes one minute to leave a great review we appreciate it we'll see you next time this has been the rich redmond show subscribe rate and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts